Okay, uh, welcome to today's discussion about sports washing. Uh, and uh, I'll do a round of introductions first. Uh, but first of all, I would also like to welcome the viewers. Uh, you will also have a chance to uh, ask questions to uh, the participants on the, on the chat. And we'll take them up uh, nearing the end of the discussions here. But first, uh, Stefan Schaffer, uh, senior lecturer here at Lusum. Uh, specializes in organizational studies and creativity, ignorance studies, and critical management studies. Thank you. Uh, in the middle, Niklas Kalnian, CEO of Malmö FF, and Christian Koch, lecturer in marketing in at University at Kripansky University. Exactly. So uh, let's kick this off uh, with uh, sports washing and uh, establish, really, what, what, what are we talking about when we're talking about sports washing, Stefan? We're talking about, yeah, it's, um, it's a concept that has been recently been taken up in research studies. So it's been named in a few newspaper articles and kind of the popular press. But a real kind of scientific discussion of the concept is uh, very recent. And uh, I think you need to contrast it between, or the usual contrasts are between what is called whitewashing and sports washing or some other kind of washing metaphor where you tend to, so in whitewashing, you tend to cover up mm -hmm. mistakes. So you, you, want that, you want the world not to see what, that there's something happening that's morally wrong or that's plain and simply wrong, right? So I, f from, from my point of view, the Tour de France, for instance, the doping scandals and the Tour de France was perhaps a matter of whitewashing, right? So we didn't want to know that there is kind of systematic doping going on in the sports. Um, sports washing, on the other hand, is, is a concept that, ta that, that tries to deflect or sort of lead away the attention from moral wrongdoings, mm -hmm. things that aren't right. So, so it's more of a, a way of producing positive images and sort of deflect attention to, or, or sort of um, make the audience not interested in any kind of human rights violations or anything other serious uh, negative things happening in a country or even for a corporation. Absolutely. Let's take a, a round on this one. Uh, your view on, the, on what is encompassed in the, in the term of the sports washing. I think uh, sports washing, of course, what you said, but I think it's so many different levels of it. Mm. So uh, when you have a uh, a company that perhaps are not uh, doing as much wrong, but still not as much good. They could uh, try to align themselves with uh, a club, a sport, uh, a World Cup, or whatever it is. So, but then you also could go all the way where you have actually bad um, management or bad uh, influence on the world, or you don't uh, take care of the environment or wh whatever it is. So it's so many levels in, in sport washing, and I think we have had sport washing long before the world was yeah. uh, pronounced. Yeah, for sure. uh, yeah, I think um, I would agree with what has been said so far, and I think I would like to add, like you said, Stefan, it's um, not really about this covering up, as we know it from whitewashing, for example, and you know, money laundering, these kind of things, but it's really distracting from something else. So there is mm -hmm. some, something wrong, uh, in, in a certain context, but it's more distracting with something more positive. Mm. And um, I think what we also could add is that this whole sports washing concept takes more place or takes part in, you know, it's, it's government, it's states. So it's not really on an organizational or uh, a company level where we have more green washing, um, pink washing, woke washing, these kind of things. So, you know, what, really those what do those mean? Yeah, well, I mean, greenwashing, I think this is perhaps a, a term that everyone is also familiar with, mm. which is more related to sustainability mm. and, you know, um, corporations um, pretending or to create an image of being environmental friendly, being sustainable, but actually the practices um, say it's something very different. So it's more, again, like a, a, a creation of an, uh, an, an image that, um, that is uh, achievable, that one wants to achieve, but mm. the practice is far behind. So the behavior is in completely misalignment with that. Right. Um, and I mean, there's uh, many kinds of washings. As I said, woke washing is something that is going to 
um, that is increasingly used by corporations when it comes to social matters, gender equality, uh, equality of many types of kinds, and where there's organizations trying to take part of that discussion, wanting to make a point with a perspective of they, ca they can gain from it, they can make money with that. Uh, by entering this this debate uh, uh, about uh, Black Lives Matter, for mm. example, and then there is a fine line between, well, there are some companies where you know audiences feel there is some authenticity to it, and there are others where then uh, uh, different stakeholders really understand, okay, this is something where they just you know jump on the bandwagon to to get some extra attention and perhaps get some uh, uh, um, uh, uh, benefits out of it but there is no real um, a proof behind these actions. Yeah, and this list can, we can continue I, yeah, this I list I with other like types. You said brown pink, washing pink and, washing. and what's pink washing? I mean, this is more um, in relation to also, you know, this, you know, breast cancer uh, um, uh, research, and then there are certain days where, th uh, where this uh, gets into the public uh, um, out there, and then there's corporations then where it has been shown that, well, they actually don't support these initiatives really. So it's okay. more like about putting the label on their products, and then there is some some kind of uh, hopefully you sign up for uh, like a paper tri tiger, and then as soon as the the spotlight has gone for. which uh, has been accused for animal rights uh, issues, right? They're having these chicken farms and uh, they have these sort of mm. uh, hardly legal sort of ways of, of treating the chickens. Um, and so there I think you, you have the kind of the gray zone between a corporation using the football club as a way of kind of boosting their reputation mm. or in uh, sort of, uh, mm. yeah, having sort of a positive spin on their their um, uh, reputation. So, and I and I guess it's with the football clubs as well, Chelsea mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. others. Where, of course, then the government is, is sort of behind it. There is a government behind there it. We'll talk about Emirates it, yeah. or uh, yeah. Qatar yeah. through corporations, yeah. right? So Qatar Airways, mm -hmm. yeah. right? I mean, it's also sort of. A, so I think that there's a sort of a gray zone. Or at least now, uh, the research is becoming to getting more also into examples of corporations that engage in this this, this practice. Yeah. And maybe not through as sponsoring. I think sponsoring is, of course, an important keyword. <laughs> And I guess where you also have uh, quite some insights uh, um, to share how, how, how this works, basically. Mm. Um, because here I think we see the mm. link a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I think all, all sponsoring is that you actually pay to be visible in, in, uh, uh, in another brand, uh, close to another brand, just to, to have that... Uh, influencing your own brand in some yeah. way so uh, and this is what I said it's I think it's in different levels uh, I think uh, I think if you name it sport washing sometimes and green washing sometimes but uh, many many I think as we we always check the background of the companies that we engage in the partnership with mm. to understand that they are close to the values that we have so with that, we can we can have a, a, a partnership that's actually a partnership and not only a sponsorship. But of course, there will be clubs uh, that also find other partnerships uh, that could be more like sport washing concept or whatever you want to call it. Mm. So, so I, th I think it's it's depending on the level because, uh, as I have said before, I think it's important for those that that are uh, role models for many others to also use that in a way in a positive way to to highlight or to influence uh, for the environment for the social welfare of all those things in, in our society that we that we can so for, from from my side you need to you need to know what you're doing and if you go it could also always be so that you have a company that have done something wrong mm. but has, they have also started a journey to become mm, to do it right mm. to become on, uh, to come on the right side mm. okay then a club could be a part of that mm. but then they have a, a very defined road of traveling mm. and 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 you can have checkpoints yeah. Yeah. so so I, I think it's i think it's really hard to do with black and white mm. uh, and of course when you come to state sponsorship that's something different 
because then the uh, the size of it, it's uh, the magnitude is Im is much much bigger. Yeah, yeah. I think in, in in this area, it is really where this this term of sports washing mm. became more popular. I think mm. and. Um, to add also what you said, Stefan, in, in the research environment, there is not really much research actually, it's really more like a popular concept mm -hmm. so far. Media is talking a lot about this, yeah. um, but it's only in the beginning to really understand what is this, or there needs to be <laughs> research actually to understand yeah. this also a bit more long term. Yeah. So, what are the effects of sport washing and uh, 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 and, the, and, these, and these kind of things? Mm. So but I mean, um, the general mm. idea whenever you go and sponsor something mm. is that you want to access that entity's uh, flair, if you will, uh, well, or their, their group of people, their, their following mm -hmm. in some way. So the, 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 the line between, mm -hmm. between washing of some sort and just sponsoring must be fairly, fairly blurry mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. place, because <laughs> in any way you sponsor, you want the shine from, say, Malmethos. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then even on a higher level, when we have these events such as the World mm. Cup, which mm. is like, I mean, it's the, the audience, it's like, a, yeah, it's the biggest audience you, you can get mm. with these mm. types of events. And this is why it's so, um, uh, how you say, lucrative for, um, uh, for yeah, yeah. For, for sponsors to just be there. Yeah. And then what we have seen in, uh, uh, with, with the Qatar World Cup or even with Russia, for example, that, mm. well, the, the big sponsors there, they, they keep quite silent, so they mm. don't want to just, you know, uh, mm -hmm. move away because there's just so much money um, mm. involved in this and so much uh, um, exposure yeah. um, um, the world over uh -huh. um, and on a smaller scale of course then you have the teams the mm. clubs and then there's this constant negotiations mm. of what you said this value alignments this is what are the the brand identity mm. our club stands for what are the companies um, that are potentially interested in sponsoring us what yeah. are their values what are their identities is, is there is an alignment uh, and if yes yeah Mm. Of course, both parties can gain from it, but but, it, but there there can be of course uh, uh, mm. problems with that if um, um, if it's perhaps not about really about the value line, mm. but it's really more about the economic factor. Mm. Yeah, because I think that's that's mm. y where you need to go. You need to go to the organizations. If it's FIFA, okay, the the values of FIFA, what do they stand for? And we have seen that when that decision of Qatar and mm. and others were taken at that moment perhaps the values was not so great yeah. uh, of the decision makers and and right. the uh, individual uh, uh, money possibility was greater yeah. Yeah. so so of course then you have a problem because the decision makers doesn't align cring around the same values mm. exactly yeah. Yeah. and i think that as in qatar you could y i mean i think there's a few things one is the like you said there's the levels right so we need to assess the seriousness of the moral violation, mm. the seriousness of what is negative, right? So so if you have a sponsor that treats uh, animals not right, then that's, I guess it's not a sort of a a, a black and white kind mm. of violation, mm. moral issue for, for everyone, right? Where you could see that there is um, there's really something wrong. Uh, um, another example, for instance, is that uh, in, 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 in a Scottish football club, I can't remember the name, a rover, not the, the, the rovers, but some, some some other football club, where they wanted to uh, to hire a football player that was uh, accused or uh, accused of, of of rape. Yeah, I think he even was convicted. convicted but mm. but and, and they wanted to hire him, and then everyone was sort of uh, resisting, mm. right? Sponsors were resisting. Mm. Uh, the the female team was sort of leaving. The coach was leaving, etc. So, so there was really a, a a perception of this is a serious grave misconduct, mm. and we don't want this in our club. Mm. And uh, there seemed to be some sort of Agreement, mm. right? While in other issues, VW, for instance, mm. as a sponsor, mm. right? I mean, mm. they 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 had they had a scandal, as we all know. Yeah. And so, how serious is that for a corporation to mm. say, okay, yeah. do we support this? Exactly. Do we want to have sponsor sponsorship like this. But I would like to flip it right now. I, I, I want to come back to to this. Yeah. But uh, I, I would like to start up. Where where do we see it working? Where where do we see sports washing actually work? And what does it mean that it works? That is efficient because companies and states are prepared to dish out billions mm. they wouldn't do that if it, they didn't think it was a, a worthwhile uh, investment so what are they what are they aiming at really mm. i think that's an interesting question also a problematic question because there's as i said earlier there's not really research that shows is it working mm. or not so i think we need to be 
really now that there is all eyes on, as you know, on Qatar and you know the, the critical discussion, at least from a Western perspective, in mm. other contexts I've been talking about that we sometimes need to go away from our Western perspective also to, uh, to better understand all this. But I think what is needed is to really um, look deeper and understand. So in, th in the next month and years, so what are effects in terms of, um, you know, um, it will the image actually increase? Mm. Uh, what, what are the deals that Qatar is perhaps now making on, on a political level, uh, in addition uh, um, to what they have been doing before? Um, and then also asking the question of how are they perceived in different parts of the world and to see what, wh what how does sports washing work really? Mm. Wouldn't it be able? Uh, wouldn't you be able to make the same kind of uh, measurements as you do with other sponsors, like that are not con uh, concerned in, uh, say, sports washing per se, mm -hmm. but another sponsor? There must be ways that are researched about mm -hmm. how well, how efficient sponsorship is in a yeah. uh, in a sense. Yeah. Well, I guess on a uh, um, on an individual company level, mm -hmm. that, that sponsors, of course, they they do their calculations. Mm -hmm. Uh, if uh, if a sponsorship has been successful mm -hmm. or not, um, and I guess uh, um, that there there's also research out there um, from from a marketing sponsoring perspective that shows like how to engage with this. But from the sports washing perspective, I think it's just a yeah uh, just a very recent concept that we don't really have these these studies mm. out there. Um, but there is now more and more um, people that focus really on this this sports marketing. Aspect that that look more into the sports washing mm -hmm. as well, yeah. and I, I think it could be uh, the sponsorship could be a shortcut in building the brand awareness and 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 also the if it's called sport washing then then to sh to change the appearance of the brand, mm -hmm. but I think I and, and you need to reflect on uh, the most important thing I think that you said was. We are doing it from a the Western perspective. Mm. I myself from a Swedish perspective, and and if you if you go to other countries or continents, perhaps they have a completely different uh, approach to to the World Cup or or other mm. uh, things mm. like that. So so we are we are not we are in our world, but you need you need to to widen the yeah. And yeah. I think it's uh, important that we um, pinpoint towards the problems yep. and these kind of things, but we also need to understand. So why is it perhaps not perceived as an of an issue in other parts of the world? Because there is, <laughs> we, are li we live here in, in a democracy, but mm. yeah, not everywhere in the world. And considering also the FIFA as an organization, mm. they sit in so many different parts of the world mm. where, where we don't have democracies. Uh, so yeah, but there is a. Mm. I think there is in research there is sort of a danger. Exactly what you mm. said. It's that we tend to fall into kind of Western centric perspectives and saying okay it all happens you know it happens in Russia and happens in the Middle East right and we don't we don't maybe uh, you know turn the spotlight perhaps on Poland right that that also might have some experience or, or, or Hungary when there is a sports event there or even some research mentions um, um, the Olympics in London 2012 right why don't we say oh this is sports washing right mm -hmm. they're just trying to kind of wash themselves from their colonial past you so know their own sort of so, <laughs> so so where do you draw the line? Mm. Well, I, I think it's uh, you don't no line, right? No, exactly. I think we yeah. should uh, we should have no line. We should have the perspective should be should be applied to everyone equally, right? Mm -hmm. Every sports yeah. club, every country, yeah. we should kind of look at it objectively and use it like that. And that's necessary, so. I think, also for that very concept of sports washing, because so far it has been the focus on non-Western yeah. states, uh, Saudi Arabia, mm. uh, Qatar, China, etc. But I think in order to 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 make that concept um, yeah more valuable, I think it's important to also apply that uh, uh, Western perspective to it in a way. Okay, how may sports washing actually happen also in yeah, yeah. just in front of our door? I basically. don't know if it's a, as a if mm. it's a good example, but uh, Berlusconi, owner of uh, AC Milan, <laughs> used used that club to yeah. Uh, yeah. to bolster yeah. his uh, yeah. his image. Yeah. Is that an example of sports I washing so. or? I think it's a very good one. Yeah, <laughs> actually. So, so. Yeah, yeah, and I'm a basketball fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> can I can I just yeah. put perhaps for a kind of differentiation to to because I, I think everyone many jump on the kind of washing metaphor mm. train because it's an established conception, but perhaps we could think about it in terms of washing and polishing, right? So washing is really mm. a way of of making it clean, right? Yeah. So that you don't see the spots and the mm. and here it's more about polishing an image, right? Mm. And then you get 
you perhaps take away this sort of this idea of it has to be clean, right? We just polish mm -hmm. our image like we mm -hmm. do in the society yeah. and make it look better. And then maybe yeah. we have this sort of this whole need on, okay, it needs to have an effect. It has an effect, it's shiny, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe that's all it is. And yeah. that's so it. you're it's happy if you type in the, the company name or the state name and instead of talking about <laughs> violations of human rights, you get ads about Premier League or World Cup etc. If you say, for instance, t uh, type in Qatar, mm. that would be an uh, effective use of of, uh, of your money when it comes to sports washing. Yeah. I think an effective yeah. use would be, I mean, from the Qatar perspective, mm. yes. that um, they have an increase in, in tourism, mm. they have mm. an increase in visitors, they have an increase in, Already in, there, in, yes. in businesses. So Germany has this huge contract with liquid gas, even mm. before the, uh, 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 the World Cup um, with Qatar. You know, it's better to do that with them than mm. with Putin and Russia. So I mean, it is mm. already like a uh, good, good uh, uh, publicity for them, and their idea is, of course, do they want to um, get closer to this Western world, basically, um, mm. in the future? And they're trying everything um, to get there. And of course, we need to um, be very clear that, um, from our Western perspective, again, that we have to pinpoint those problems that are there. Mm. Um, and I think the, um, and that's why I think it's also important to say that well, we don't need a line. We just need this criticism and that's good and then mm. we will need to continue to be critical also mm. in the future and there needs to be different uh, um, um, different stakeholders involved in this that need to continue to be critical and not just stopping that now that the World Cup is over mm. because that's the main problem that there is a lot of discussions uh, in media while the, uh, the World Cup was was ongoing mm. but now the, the question is really will this keep on that there will that Qatar will be pressured, for example, to, to improve uh, uh, human rights mm. uh, um, and, and these kind of things. Mm. But same no. moment. Could, could, could I just ask yes. a question? Mm. Mm. So the definition between polishing and, and washing, Yeah. because uh, who is making the definition? Yeah. <laughs> and when do we decide when, it's when it could be polishing yeah. or, s or spot washing? Yeah. So just to, to for me to understand, yeah. because f f my personal side is I always yeah. have a line. Yeah. That's my values. When I think I pass them, mm. then I come perhaps to the polishing or washing. Yeah. But the the more common academic definition of how do we yeah. decide that? Yeah, so I think it's um, I don't know if it leads us too far away, <laughs> but I I think um, one of the th one of the things you work with perhaps as a researcher or as a general interested person is to use metaphors to understand phenomena like mm. this, right? So we don't have a really a precise definition like we discussed, right? Mm. We don't really know what it is, so we need to. We need to use a metaphor to make some sort of association with mm. it, something we understand applied to this phenomenon. Mm. And I think this is, this is at least how we work also here in our research group, that we're using, we're using metaphors to make sense of organizations, for instance, right? Mm. We can say an organization is a machine, mm. then it needs to work efficiently on all levels. Right? Mm. It, it can be a culture, mm. so it needs to have the right values and all that. And so I think this is the, the start of trying to get a clearer idea and a clearer sense of what the concept really is mm. so we start metaphorical and then I think the like Christian would say then we need to have more sort of successive uh, strategies and research designs to actually operationalize mm. this in some way and try to look at it what are the effects mm. right what, what, what but still first from a so Swedish perspective and a European perspective yeah. and do you also include the rest of the world because mm. the perception could be yeah it could be different yeah. so I think it's um, yeah, it's, I think it's it's difficult to do sort of worldwide studies, mm. right? So what you need to do, you need to kind of disseminate these concepts on conference and somewhere else so that mm. research from other countries mm. would use them and say, okay, so for instance, it would be interesting of, of how research in Qatar would look at the phenomenon of the world, mm. of the, the world championship, right? Mm. Exactly. Is there anything yeah. like yeah. there that, that could be, yeah. perhaps objectively, mm. right? I mean, to, to look at this or in China or somewhere mm. else. So, so I think this is the... This is the 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 sort of the purpose of international research. Mm. Right? So we mm. connect to mm. other researchers, mm. and we try to get this um, done. But I think my impression is that you jump on trains, right? There's craft washing, mm. green washing, pink washing, all kinds of washing, and there's no s real sense in it mm. yet. So yeah. I, as a researcher, would say let's try to let's try to use polishing as a metaphor. Mm. Let's try to see what comes up here, mm. what generates. Associations, research designs, etc., mm. and then go that path, perhaps. Mm. 
But there you have actually quite quite some research of from the from the marketing field, from the branding field, when it comes to this metaphor of polishing. Okay. It's like yeah. this this idea of you know image, mm -hmm. image versus identity, for yeah. example, and that has been an ongoing conversation for a very long long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that uh, that you either are more um, you know market oriented and you're trying to you know serve the needs and wants that are out there in terms of you know polishing your image. This is what consumer groups and markets want, or you go the other way that you start more internally brand driven from value and identity perspective so this is who we are um, but not at all costs mm. so to speak um, so we don't serve that market because mm. this is simply not in our area of mm. expertise mm. and this is not mm. our values etc so it's more this this perspective of mm. that it's more the identity coming first is it more the image mm. and um, yeah, so there, there is some research uh, in that regard, but I think mm. when it comes to the very concept here that we that we discuss sports washing again, so this needs, it's it's one of those washings that mm. it's like a hyped a little bit. It's mm. like a, uh, uh, it's like a um, yeah keyword that mm. is coming out of, out of media, so to speak. That mm. needs more work and uh, more integrative work and mm. to see okay what are actually the differences and the similarities mm. to already established concepts. Mm. And I think when it, we take a history perspective, for example, history uh, r uh, historians uh, researching um, propaganda, for example, right? There could be a connection mm. made to to sports washing, mm. for example, mm. but just in a in a new uh, um, uh, context, mm. so to speak, of the uh, yeah 21st century with uh, digital technologies, etc. But the the very idea um, really is trying, yeah, polishing or distracting from something that is maybe not so nice mm. with some more positive elements mm. in order to reach certain um, goals. Mm. Which has been and around since 2000 years, I guess, mm. right? So exactly. Yeah, it's not a new exactly. phenomenon. Mm. Yeah. 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 There were ancient Olympics as well, <laughs> <when> <laughs> yeah. subject to, exactly. to sports yeah. watching. Yeah. Uh, but Nicholas, I, I'm thinking you as CEO as well for one of the most prestigious clubs in Sweden, you must be subject to attempts at sports watching mm. in some ways, mm. more or less obvious. Are you explicit with, you You were uh, talking about the values mm. that they have to correlate to. Mm. Are you explicit in explaining what those values are to clubs or is that an in-house thing? And uh, n n how, how do you yeah. communicate with would-be sponsors that either you find or mm. that have found you? Both, I think. Mm. We are, sometimes we uh, are contacted and more often we contact, but I think for our side, uh, values are the foundation of how we are doing things and, and our existence and what, what, not what, but how we are doing it. And then, of course, you have uh, budgets and you have goals and all vision and so on. Uh, but if if another person that doesn't know the organization but meet us for the first time, and depending on what level they meet us, could uh, describe us in the same way that we have put down our values then we have succeeded because then we are actually are living the values that mm. we have. So with that, in Sweden and I think also especially in the region that we are working in, we are well known of what, what we stand for, but uh, not so much when you have international partners that, that perhaps doesn't have uh, a foothold in the Scandinavian or Swedish market yet, then we can do questions because we have been playing for the European competitions uh, I think seven times the last 12 years so more than half of them we have been in in Europe and of course that attract interest mm -hmm. Mm. but but I think still uh, for me it's I understand the complexity but as an individual it's quite easy because what my values are mm. if they are aligned then yes then we could find a, mm. a, a relationship um, and then in the best of words, of course, both partners are gaining from it. Uh, but when you come to, to, to bigger organizations, then this is always much, much harder. Mm. And you need to do uh, uh, due diligence to, mm. to understand if, if this is something that we can work with. I think there is the, the so, because I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, you probably never had that problem. Y you may have, but, but uh, I think some clubs like Newcastle, I think, and uh, and also Werder Bremen, they had economic problems, right? So, yep. so they, th the sponsors were kind of a lifeline yep. for them. Yep. And there was a fan I read on, a, on, a, on, on, uh, on the internet that who said that, yes, I mean, everyone who has, I don't like the sponsor either, mm. but if someone has 10 million <laughs> euros yep. to give to the club, <laughs> please step forward, right? Mm. I mean, we need this. So, 
some I wonder what the kind of when do the values of the club you know the, the mm. sort of the local mm. values and the, when do they when are they kind of overridden by no, but existential I issues, think this is the classic dilemmas yeah. because you, you always uh, find yourself in situations where you have exactly that problem yeah. it could have been small things but also in the existential things of the club yeah. will we will we survive yeah mm. um, uh, uh, if I think it's it must be so strong mm. that if that overrides yeah. the values and why the club exists yeah. then you have changed your purpose mm. yeah Okay. So, so yeah. you, you need you need to have a decision. You need to make a decision. Yeah. Otherwise, you need to to try to find a to, to to find up a story that you need to tell. Yeah. But but if you do that, then you always al and they already have stepped stepped away a little yeah. bit. The, the I think the the difficult things is when you find a uh, relationship or, or partner or sponsorship where you. Um, uh, where they are t uh, starting a, a journey, as I said before, mm. they are trying to improve. Yeah. And could you be a part of that? Mm. Okay. You don't really know if they will change. Mm. Are they just using you, mm. or do they sign on? Yeah. Of uh, we are going yeah. to do this together. Yeah. Then I could take a risk. Yeah. Because it could improve both. Yeah. Mm. So, so again, <laughs> again, this example of Wiesenhof, the sponsor of Werder Bremen, they had a 2015, then they had a tournament where they had. Uh, the hashtag we are against animal or yeah. we, we are for animal rights mm. but then I think the problem is like like um, Christian already talked about right we have so many image uh, I mean the society is image based nowadays right mm. e much is an image in social media and we project our our image rather yes. on our identities that there's a lot of cynicism mm. right so then then people lose trust mm. in like you said it is yep. that really the purpose right are they actually changing or is it really another Yep. Image on an image on an image, right? Mm. We we sort of do we uh, risk some kind that. of image fatigue? Yeah, that's <laughs> that for sure. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So so uh, no wonder mm. there's sort of a, a way trying to regress back to sort of mm. some mm. sort of authentic authenticity, right? So we do research on craft, for instance, right? To go back to 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 something like this, right? Something where we feel and see the product, mm. know how it's made, and that's something authentic. Mm. And I imagine in Malmo, it's something also perhaps so rooted in the in the city. I mean, in the whole history of the city, that that would also be very big as a sort of an influence against these kind mm. of losing your purpose and the image. But also membership owned. Right. So membership owned clubs. Yeah. If you compare okay. that to many of the other yeah. German, many German clubs, yeah. of course, m most of the German club is membership owned. So so that is like a, that's the security mm. of not going yeah. uh, mm. too far away. Yeah. From the values that you have, because yeah. you are losing the identity. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. actually, that's a selling point for us, yeah. Yeah. because we could say that we are membership mm. owned. Mm. We have a really, really good foundation mm. to to work from, yeah. and with that, the risk to be associated with us is is less. Mm. Is actually mm. more potential. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Also, the the so question of a membership owned club that actually would accept money from uh, from uh, a sports washer, say. Mm there the complicity would be more evident. Yeah. But the question right. of complicity is fairly com complex in itself. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, okay, uh, who, who can, uh, can I still like Newcastle, for instance, well knowing wha where the money comes from, but I've been, I've been a supporter, say, for 50 years. <laughs> do mm. I have to change colors now? Mm. Mm. Or mm. what can I do not to be complicit in this uh, sports washing thing? Mm. I think that's an individual question. Yeah. Mm. Uh, really so. Mm. Uh, really close to, to your heart, to what deci decisions you need to take. But mm. the problem is also, I think, that not all information is, is open to everyone. And mm. usually it's not public until it's too late. Mm. So if, if I don't think there's so many that goes into a, a partnership that, that is sport washing as in your definition, mm. if you know where you, you stand and what road you are going. Because then it's, it's, it's too... It's too hard. It, it mm. won't work. But what are the ways of resisting, say, and I doing yeah. the right things? I, th I think complicity. I think is is uh, we stand with this a bit of research would say that you the problem here is that you you normalize the behavior, mm. right? So so there's a few instances that they also looked at in in, in research that uh, that. Um, the so-called halo effect is, is is there, right? So the halo effect is that these positive association, they inform all the other behaviors, right? So, mm. so Abramovich 
has done a lot of good things for Chelsea. Right, bought the club and all that, and I think, and and so this this sort of effect overrides all other actions and all other images, and I think that's a problem because it normalizes that behavior and it doesn't differentiate anymore between the bad behavior and the good behavior. Mm. So I think this is the one of the problems, and of course the other problem is also that you 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 tend to defend the actions of someone who you're very closely <coughs> identifying <coughs> with, right? So if it's my football club that I rooted for for 40 years and my dad before that and, and so mm. on, then someone who buys the club, in some cases, is sort of identified as he's one of ours, mm. right? He's one of mm. our tribe. Mm. And, and so we need to defend someone mm. uh, against uh, all odds. But I think this is also, again, sort of, mm. you know, it's a, it's a scientific concept and, and it's probably not general, generally applicable, but we tend to, we tend to justify our choices, mm. right? There's a cognitive bias as well that we, you know, this is, it can't be so bad, mm. right? If he or she buys my club, then that's okay, right? Well, at least we kind of willfully ignore mm. what's happening. Or we're just greedy, like Phil Nicholson, for instance, right, who said about the Saudis, they are terrible, the golf player, then when he switched to the uh, Saudi-sponsored league, that it's all terrible what they're doing there, and they murdered the journalist, and, you know, it, it's horrible, horrible human rights and all that. But, you know, hey, they're going to give us a lot of money, why not? Yeah. Right? Mm. Mm. And then the storytelling changes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we had ambassadors <laughs> yeah. for, uh, for this wor World Cup, also individual football players. They yeah. took a lot of money yeah. to endorse it. Yeah. Mm. You know, Cristiano Ronaldo, he signed with a, yeah. a, a club in, uh, yeah. uh, there in that region yeah. as well. Yeah. So maybe money yeah. in the end might yeah. override the... Yeah, but I think this, this is the, the tricky part about that, um, that, that context that we're talking about sports mm. because it's this huge cultural value mm. yeah. to people. Mm. That and, you know, those sports washers, they know that and this is why they're focusing on that because they can turn people around with that because mm. the, the cultural value is so strong that people just accept mm. the wrongdoing, so mm. to speak. Mm. Um, and that's, um, that's problematic. But I think there will always be some that kind of where they, they see, okay, maybe I need to do an individual. As you said, I think mm. it starts, of course, on individual level. Mm. I need to make a decision in terms of maybe I need to leave that mm. and I need mm. to find some other uh, uh, um, uh, club that is of value to meet my own values, my mm. personal values. And that it maybe that that it goes on to the next level, you know, more organization, more institution. There's sponsors, mm. um, uh, co-sponsors that may, might say, okay, no, I don't want to have mm. something to do with that environment mm. anymore. So yeah. there might be some ripple effects, mm. so to speak, um, yeah. that starts, but it needs to start on an indivi individual level mm. somehow, I think. Yeah. Yeah. In some cases, you do have uh, fan groups that are strongly organized that have been responsible for, say, uh, strikes, not going to their uh, team's games. In my memory, it mm. has been usually uh, connected to underperforming teams. <laughs> right. But I mean, yeah. it could be used for any reason yeah. if you're mm. well organized. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I mean, you, if you see uh, the German team is a great example of this championship, right? I mean, they, uh, not even they achieved a change that they could wear a rainbow uh, mm. um, sign right yeah. I mean uh, if not even one of the biggest <laughs> football associations <laughs> within the, the the FIFA could achieve that mm. it's it's sort of I think this is mm. also makes a lot of people not resist in that sense because we can't do anything anyway right either mm. we check mm. out mentally individually and say okay fr I go from Newcastle to Edinburgh or whatever or Aberdeen right mm. or I I uh, yeah I leave it but this collective organization mm. is is mm. Um, I think yeah mm very difficult because people feel just powerless. I mean, mm. if we have mm. this example now from this championship that that was absurd, I think, at mm. some stage. Also yeah. that the teams themselves don't get together and say, okay, we are five teams, you know, we want to wear the rainbow, uh, you know, uh, mm. not yeah. even that kind of organization no. was possible. Yeah, and then um, it's just uh, some teams saying, you know, we don't, we have no intention at all to make any political statements. We just want yeah. to play football and then yeah. others feel that well, we need to say something and then it's, it becomes just, um, yeah. yeah, a very difficult I think this is one of the most, mis yeah. most difficult for the, for the athletes because yeah. they are uh, pounded from all angles mm. in of so many different topics. Yeah of of deciding right or wrong yeah okay make make a stand do it in this do it in that so to f yeah. to sometimes just to 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 be able to focus they must say okay now we are players now now we are doing this only yeah. um because 
the energy that they ne need to put down in, in all mm -hmm. other discussions is so big that it will affect uh, the prestation, uh, the performance on the yeah. pitch. Mm -hmm. So I think it's. A, I think perhaps it should be needed more. I think we two mm -hmm. some symbolic things in the Qatar. It was one was the uh, yeah. the rainbow, yeah. Yeah. and the other one was not selling beer. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think those two was strong statements yeah. of of what FIFA agreed on mm -hmm. uh, yeah. on that World Cup, yeah. and I think that could be actually discussed. Yeah. How d how did the decision for that go? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Who made it? Yeah. Mm. But like you said about mm. national teams, say uh, there arose a situation in in Sweden, and uh, the. Uh, Football Association was behind, say, a sponsorship that you do not agree with. Wouldn't it be possible for the biggest clubs, like on the international stage, yeah, you have like Germany, Brazil, Argentina, England, if they would say, no, we won't abide by this, we will wear the rainbow or we won't play at all, there would not be a World Cup without these countries if they go out together. So the same thing in, in Sweden, if if Mm. Malmö FF and uh, EFQ at the boy and a couple of the Stockholm teams would say, no, we won't play if, if this goes on. Wouldn't this be a very powerful move? Yes, but we are still in, in a democratic organization. So mm. if we use that way, then somewhere on the line we have said yes to something that makes that possible. Mm. So, for example, in, in, our in, in, in the Swedish league, we have two central uh, negotiated deals is the TV and the betting companies, mm. that, that, the, 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 the TV rights. Those two is the only. And that, oh. we, have, that mm -hmm. we have said, okay, that's yours. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I think we should go the democratic way mm. because we are what mm. we are. So then we go together with the others and say, okay, we need to have a, a vote in this. Mm. We are going in this direction because otherwise, when is it allowed not to use the democratic way yep. and just say I won't? Absolutely. Okay, then you have to, I think, uh, take the fine or the pun punishment that mm. you get mm. and you'd be happy with that. Mm. Yeah, in, in a sense, I think when I think about it, this is just a, a thought, but, but it's also if it aligns with the values of the sport, right? So if you see the Ukraine war, mm. uh, the attack on Ukraine, it was concerted action. Everyone sort mm. of excluded Russia from everything. So apparently the the moral violation there strokes something with all our yeah. values. Homosexuality in football is still a topic that is difficult, perhaps mm. not in Sweden, but at least in Germany and also in England. Mm. It's an issue that is in, in within the sports or, uh, or still kind of not fully accepted, I guess, right? Um, without knowing mm. some on research. On, on the this. men's side, yeah. there's not many open gay football players. On yeah. the women's side, it's m a lot more open gay football players. Yeah. So the, so the men should learn from the women. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely. So in, in that sense, it's sort of a, it, 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 it's perhaps also the values of the, the sports doesn't align yeah. or, you know, the sort of are not strong enough to kind of contest the, the values that are sort of, you know, represented in the country that do does the sports washing in Qatar yeah. or so somewhere else, perhaps. That's yeah. also an Research, pot potential yeah. research yeah. <laughs> <laughs> question. Yeah. So what, <laughs> are, what are specific values in certain types of sports yeah. and uh, how does that kind of, yeah. uh, uh, what kind of consequence that has? Yeah. 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 Uh, mm -hmm. I'm starting to uh, go to the part where we round things off, mm -hmm. but we also have some questions from our viewers and you were nearing an answer to one of them, but uh, uh, one asks to you specifically, uh, what is MFF's view on the sponsorship and mandatory promotion of Unibet in Allsvenska? So, um, and the, as I said, uh, we have two, is, is the TV rights and is, is the betting rights that's yeah. centralized in the league and has been so for so many years. Uh, with that, before it was Svenska Spel, that's uh, the state-owned and it was monopoly and, and at that time it's, it was no discussion at all. Uh, of course, the, the world around us changes uh, and with that it comes different discussions and betting is one of those. Mm. So of course we need to, to understand and see what, what, uh, what the development is. Uh, we know that uh, betting uh, uh, as an uh, addiction is, is, is 
is known and we also know it's harder to understand how to tackle that but we know it ruins people's lives so okay we need to find ways to understand that at, at the same time but to make a different sh uh, 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 a big change then it we it needs to be a decision to say okay we will not have betting partners anymore that's a decision for the clubs and the members of the clubs first members then the clubs and then the and the, then the league uh, and to all three of you what is your view on the next world cup in the USA is it also an application of isn't this also an application of sports washing considering the amount of wars involvement and the systematic racism against people of color I think that's a very good question and that is very much in line with wha what we said in the beginning that so far the focus on sports washing is really on you know, non-western countries mm. and I think that will be a perfect opportunity to really scrutinize also <laughs> um, the sports washing that is potentially happening um, from a Western and you mm. know a very <laughs> mm. <laughs> the prototypical Western uh, perspective, which is uh, uh, the U.S. I think um, uh, I hope that there will be a lot of uh, mm. uh, um, research and a lot of uh, studies coming perhaps out of that mm. now. Mm. I mean, mm. you've had powerful stances made by players of say Colin Kaepernick of uh, the, the 49ers w that was the first one who took a took a knee when they mm. were uh, playing the national anthem in mm. the in the NFL, followed by the the black black lives matter movement that also mm. also made an appearance on the jerseys of uh, national basketball association players so you have you have a movement mm. and you have strong interests working at, at, at showing off uh, the us as as a sports washing country i, I what, what i think is um what what i think christian said about being critical i think in a sense it's becoming it's become easier to build an image due to all uh, new media that we have, right? We don't have propaganda anymore, and just yeah. mass media communication. But that tool, I think, is double-edged because it can turn against exactly. against yeah. you as well, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's an instrumental use, but it's also a threat in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I think perhaps, and that's just an hypothesis, that the US as a, as a country with perhaps a little bit more open media, right? A little mm -hmm. bit more open media landscapes and, and you know, unrestricted use to social media and all that, Twitter aside perhaps now. Yeah. But the, the so, so perhaps there's also more <coughs> possibilities to actually be more critical and sort of, you know, do investigations and keep people updated then from countries that have limited access to, to media and limited access for people to, 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 to do research and to interview people and to and to be there so perhaps mm -hmm. it's 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 uh, it will be used for image polishing if we say that or sports mm -hmm. washing but i think uh, the possibilities of actually being more critical about it are perhaps also bigger or more extensive yeah and that's the positive thing also yes. that there is um you know there is ways to scrutinize and there's yeah. ways to 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 criticize and to to keep on pushing so to speak and mm -hmm. then yeah. perhaps eventually there will be even if it's not big changes are big positive developments and it's small steps perhaps at a time and that also applies to Qatar perhaps where mm. we will perhaps see in five ten years well maybe some it was some positive mm. developments also yeah. and, and maybe not and that we need to uh, um, have our learnings do, you, do you see a future where we if not eradicate it can suppress it enough so that it's almost meaningless sports mm. wash I think I think it's gonna get worse yeah <laughs> I mm -hmm. think it would be even harder to understand what's what, what's true and what's false. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 It would so be an illusion, I think, too, yeah. that this will just go away. Yeah. And the same mm. illusion that sports and politics uh, are mm. not kind of working together. Mm. So that illusion, I think, we shouldn't have anymore. Mm. And that's also maybe I think we need, you know, uh, uh, footballers they need to be trained in <laughs> actually yeah. mm. being able to take these. Um, um, this additional pressure, because I mean, most of them make a lot of money, so there, yeah. there should be a way to, um, to actually be able to, hmm. yeah, to relate perhaps to these questions. Yeah, but, 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 but I think then you need to put mm. it on another perspective. Y you mm. should know that, or we should know mm. that when the, the things that we demand from people that are in the age between 18 to 30, because th that's where they mm. are in their primes usually. Yeah. Mm. We we are we are w if we want them to be more secure in their own beliefs as perhaps we are yeah. a little bit older than that mm. that's a really hard work mm. for them mm. so mm. it's young people that should make a stand that is mm. very very difficult to make even when you have more experience mm. so so we 
we need to have a, it's a fine line. You need to of balance course, on yeah. that to to, yeah. to not put yeah. them in situations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think my point was really to just say that I mean, the the entanglement of sports yep. and politics it's just there. Yep. Yeah, and we cannot uh, talk that away, yeah. so to speak. And Definitely. This, this illusion of well, this is where football is coming from, mm -hmm. and you know, it's this. It's yeah, it's about fair play. It's about uh, uh, you know. Uh, having having fun and these kind of things and these are the the, the, the original beginnings but there's since so much time there's so much money mm. made mm. around this it's, mm. it's just another business so it's uh, yeah. it would be an illusion to mm. um, uh, to just um, look away mm. so maybe speak. there's some sort of because we see in in terms of like I talked about in cr mm. terms of craft for instance right we'd mm. see a turn away from mass consumption to craft consumption right on, on some levels Beer is one example, right? chocolate and all that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so maybe we, we might find in um, 20, 30 years, we might find people going to local clubs, right? Football mm -hmm. clubs that mm -hmm. are playing in Lund, right? And you have yeah. perhaps 5,000 people watching it to, to just enjoy those. Mm -hmm. yeah. This game, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. you used to enjoy. And, yeah. and so maybe at some stages it, it may collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would go be back to local roots. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that's I also I think interesting. <laughs> I uh, if I may add that, with uh, we haven't talked so much about FIFA, I think, mm. because mm. there has been so much focus on you know Qatar as the uh, you know um, the bad guy, so to mm. speak. But I think the FIFA organization, this is something where we have to say that well, there there is so much corrupt uh, corruption in there, and mm. it's kind of a yeah uh, uh, an institution that is in in, in form of, of crisis and yeah. with your perspective i think maybe we need to go away from this super powerful yeah. world spanning organization and more coming local. back to more local organization yeah. of um, of the sport mm -hmm. so yeah. to speak and we see that already there's a lot of tension between uefa and fifa for example mm -hmm. because UEFA would have been you know well maybe or denmark saying perhaps mm -hmm. we need to get out of this right mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's an interesting, uh, yeah. uh, interesting perspective yeah. with um, the developments that we see in other mm. um, businesses with mm. craft, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to, to round this up, we, we're looking at a, a future <coughs> that seems to go in a, a, in a more complex and more difficult way rather than uh, getting to grips with, with things like sports washing. Mm. So, uh, but also uh, an optimistic glimmer there <laughs> with going back to the the roots of sports with uh, with local clubs. Mm. Uh, be interesting to see how how this plays out. Thank you, every one of you, for coming today okay. and having this discussion, and thank you, uh, thank you to our viewers as well. Uh, and uh, I think this will be all for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, yeah.